Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about how we are preparing for Vivian's upcoming surgery. I'm actually filming this video about a week out from when her surgery will be. Before I get too into the video, I'm gonna give a quick background on what's going on with her and why she needs surgery. Long story short, at our 20 week anatomy scan, there was some abnormality found with Vivian's kidney. We had some follow up ultrasounds done throughout my pregnancy, but ultimately we had to wait until she was born before we really knew what was going on. Once she was born, they did a kidney ultrasound at birth and what we saw on that ultrasound was a little bit different than what they thought they saw when she was in utero. So I'm gonna explain kind of what she has. Vivian was born with a duplex left kidney. This means she has two ureters coming off of the left kidney instead of just one. I'll include some pictures on what is normal and what Vivian's got going on. One of the ureters that's coming off of the top part of her left kidney ends in what's called a ureterocele. A ureterocele is just a blockage in the ureter. Because of this, the top part of Vivian's left kidney never fully formed, so it doesn't actually have any function. So she just has function in her right kidney and the lower part of her left kidney. At two weeks old, she had to have a test done called a VCUG. A VCUG uses fluoroscopy to see the ureters and the bladder as well as the kidneys and to assess for VUR. VUR is when urine backflows from the bladder up the ureters and sometimes all the way up into the kidneys. Because of all the other things going on with her kidney and because I had VUR growing up, there's actually a familial link with VUR. They wanted to test her right away because it was likely that she had some grade of reflux and we wanted to find out what grade she had. Unfortunately, the VCUG showed us that she had grade four VUR in the left and grade two in the right. The grading scale goes from zero to five, five being the worst. And unfortunately with grade four and grade five VUR, you likely will need some type of intervention at some point in your life. VUR can cause UTIs, so she has actually been on prophylactic antibiotics since the day she was born. <laughs> Thankfully, we hadn't had any issues with UTIs being a problem until around 10 months of age. During her 10th month of life, unfortunately, she spiked a fever at home. We ended up having to bring her into the ER so she could get a urine culture done. The urine culture was positive, so she was on treatment dose antibiotics for 10 days at home. She finished that course of antibiotics on a Sunday afternoon, and by Tuesday that same week, she had another fever. We called the urology clinic and they told us to bring her in the following morning because she would need another urine culture done. I met Trevor and Vivian in the urology clinic the following morning after work. She ended up getting admitted for pyelonephritis and needed to be in the hospital for three days getting IV antibiotics and IV fluids. For those of you that don't know, I am an ICU nurse. I work in the pediatric cardiothoracic ICU. I work with babies and kids who have open heart surgery. Naturally, I thought being a nurse, I would just know what to do when my kid is sick. It was terrible. Having a baby sick in the hospital is the worst experience ever. I don't know how the families on my unit do it. I have, honestly, after this experience, I have a whole new perspective that I take with me to work now. And I have a whole new respect for the families that care for these sick, sick babies and sick children. It was also really hard because of everything going on right now with COVID. We weren't able to have any visitors, so it was just Trevor and I at the bedside the whole time. I'm just grateful that our hospital stay was only three days and that we were able to take Vivian home in full health 
having her in the hospital was so hard. So after our three day inpatient stay, we took her back the following week for a repeat VCUG so we could assess whether or not her reflux was better, worse, or the same so that we could make a plan on what to do next. Unfortunately, the reflux was not any better. It was about the same, maybe a little bit worse. The decision was made to do a surgery that should stop the reflux. The surgery that Viv will be having is a ureteral reimplantation surgery. From how I understand it, basically he's gonna go in and move where the ureters are implanted into the bladder and that should prevent the reflux from occurring. Ideally, surgery will fix the problem and she won't need any further intervention and she won't need to be on antibiotics, but he did say that there is a 5% chance that she may need further intervention down the line or that the reflux may not go away completely. We are hoping and praying for complete recovery. So with all of that being said, she will be having surgery here very soon. So I thought I would take some time in this video and share with you guys what we are doing to prepare her for surgery, what we're doing to prepare ourselves for surgery. I'll also share what I'm planning to pack in our hospital bags since this surgery is going to require two to four days in the hospital afterwards. So how are we preparing our one-year-old for surgery? That is a great question. She's only one years old, so it's really hard to explain to her that she's about to go to the hospital and have a surgery. I think it's really important to tell her what is going to happen, even if she doesn't understand what I'm saying, and even if it doesn't make sense to her. I think that kids understand a lot more than we give them credit for, and so I think it's really important that in preparation for this surgery that I talk to her about it and share with her what's going to happen. She may not understand what I'm saying and it may not make any sense and she may not remember any of what I'm saying, but I'm still doing it anyways and I'm still talking to her about the fact that we're gonna be going to the hospital, that she's going to go with the doctors and take a little nap and when she wakes up, she's probably gonna be hurting and a little bit sore, but we talk about these things with her. And like I said, she probably has no idea what I'm saying or what any of it means, but I still talk about it with her because I think it's really important that she hears the words and that she hears mommy talking about it and being okay with it. Just saying it out loud, I think is very helpful. So for Viv's birthday, my mom got her a little medical kit. Here is the medical kit that Vivian got for her birthday. I'm gonna show you guys what's inside. So inside, she's got a little otoscope to look in the ears. She's got a little stethoscope to listen. She's got a little thermometer, takes temperature. She's got a syringe that can be medicine or a shot and a blood pressure cuff and a band-aid. All of these things are things that she may encounter while she's in the hospital. Kids learn best through play so having this medical kit allows Vivian time at home to play with the things that she's going to see at the hospital. It's going to give her the opportunity to like familiarize herself with these different objects and hopefully when she sees them being used by the doctors and nurses at the hospital it'll be a little less fearful for her because she'll know or she'll have played with these things before. So when we play with the medical kit oftentimes we will play with each other so mommy puts the stethoscope on and listens to baby and baby listens to mom. Sometimes we will use her stuffed animals as well and play with her stuffed animals. So she's like the doctor and she's got her stuffed animals and her baby dolls. So that is kind of how we incorporate the medical kit in preparing Vivian for her surgery. 
Final thing that we're gonna have to do for Viv in preparation for her surgery is she is gonna have to get COVID tested. So we're gonna be taking her to the health center. They do drive-through COVID testing. And so she will have that done prior to surgery. Thankfully, she won't need any pre-op blood work or any other types of things, but she will need a negative COVID test in order to proceed with surgery. So obviously there's only so much you can do to prepare a one-year-old for surgery. I'm gonna kind of share some of the things that we, my husband and I, are doing to prepare ourselves for surgery. Because I feel like when your one-year-old is having surgery, they have no idea what's about to happen. But you as the parent, you know, and you're stressing about it and you're worried about it. And so I'm gonna kind of share just a couple of the things that I'm doing, that my husband's doing to prepare for this major surgery coming up. First, I just have to say, is there really any way to like prepare yourself for your baby to have surgery? I don't think that there is. I think that your child having surgery is terrifying. I think it's nerve wracking. I think it's big and it's scary. And I don't know if there's any way to truly, truly prepare for what's to come. I think no matter what you do, it's just gonna be really, really hard to send your kid off to the OR. One of the things that we did that was super helpful was we had a meeting with our surgeon a couple weeks before her surgery. Before the meeting, we wrote down all of the questions that we had regarding her surgery so that we would be really prepared for the meeting and we would be able to make sure that all of our questions get answered. This was really helpful because sometimes it's really hard to think of questions on the spot. And so preparing our questions and having everything written down and ready to go before our meeting was just helpful to ease our minds. And that way we were able to get all of our questions answered and then some. And that just really helped make us feel a little bit more comfortable and prepared, I guess, in a way for her surgery. Another thing I would recommend that you do as a parent getting ready for your child to have a surgery is to talk. Talk about it. Talk about it with your friends. Talk about it with your family. Talk about it with your pastors, with whoever you need to talk about it with. Just talk about it. And I think when you talk about them and you share what your fears are and what your concerns are and what you're most nervous for and what you're excited for after the fact. I think when you talk about it, it helps to alleviate some of the stress and worry that's surrounding this major thing. My number one recommendation and what has helped me, I think the most, is to pray. I don't know if you're the praying type, I don't know if you believe in God or the power of prayer, but I do. And so for me, I've been praying day and night leading up to the surgery, praying for protection over my daughter, praying for the surgery to go smoothly, praying for all the doctors and the nurses who will be taking care of her, just praying for everything surrounding it. And that has helped. It has helped to spend time in prayer, asking God to protect my daughter through this major surgery. Ultimately, preparing your child for surgery is tough. It doesn't matter how old they are or how young they are. It's hard. It's hard and it's gonna be hard no matter what. So those are kind of the ways that we're preparing ourselves in Vivian for surgery. Like I said before, I think it's really, really hard to prepare for something like this, especially with a one-year-old. They just don't know what's coming and to be honest, you as the parent don't really know what's coming either. So I just wanna say, if you are a parent out there getting ready to send your kid off to surgery, I'll be praying for you. I'll be praying for all the parents everywhere, <laughs> for anybody that has to send their kid off to surgery, I'll be praying for you. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about is what we're gonna be bringing in our hospital bag. When we were in the hospital back in July, I had just gotten off of a three-day work stretch and I actually met Trevor and Vivian down in the clinic 
after work one morning. I did not expect for her to be admitted, but obviously she was. So Trevor ran home and just packed a bag with a couple of things to get us through a couple of days and it worked. But I have to say, I'm a little excited that I get to pack our bags this time. We were told a two to four day hospital stay after the surgery, depending on how she does and how recovery goes. My plan is to pack for around three days. We live close enough to the hospital where if we had to run home and get some stuff, we could do that very easily. So I don't wanna overpack, I wanna keep our stuff minimal, but I also wanna make sure that we have everything we need. So for Trevor and I, as far as clothing goes, my plan is to pack layers and to pack comfy clothes. I'll also be packing a small little toiletry bag. The only other thing I'm planning to bring for Trevor and I is snacks. As far as Viv goes, I'm gonna pack some clothes for her, even though I don't know if she'll wear them or not while we're in the hospital. I'm sure some of it kind of depends on where her IVs are and how she's feeling. We may just keep her in a diaper if that's what she's most comfortable in. We'll just kind of have to wait and see. But I am gonna pack her some clothes. I'm also planning on bringing some of her favorite toys for when she starts to feel a little bit better so she's got stuff to play with and keep her occupied. She is really into books. So I'm planning on bringing a couple of her favorite books so that we can sit and read them with her I think it'll be a really good activity for when she's not feeling the best. The other big thing that we will definitely be bringing is her sound machine. She uses this every night to sleep and I want to try to keep some consistency and normalcy for her. So I'm planning on bringing her sound machine so that she has that normalcy that she would have at home. She also has her stuffed llama that she sleeps with every night and for naps. Planning to bring that because I think that will bring her some comfort and also some normalcy from home. The only other stuff I'll bring for Viv would be some of her cups and some snacks for her as well. And that's it. So I think that pretty much wraps up this video. If you do pray, please keep Vivian in your prayers this next week. If you guys would be interested in a part two of this video where I talk about our experience in the hospital, how the surgery went, and the recovery process, leave me a comment down below and let me know that you would be interested in that. If you guys liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. I post new videos every Monday. I will see you guys next Monday.